Okay, so yeah. this structure was uh, curved in two planes and quite a challenge to actually fabricate and draw. So the roof is pretty straightforward. As you can see, it's a normal straight, pretty simple roof with gutters internal, but the facades on the outside were the struggle where we had huge assemblies looking like that type of a piece with fabricated tubes and completely plates like we had to fabricate all these rolled sections couldn't be rolled we had to make them all out of plates and fabricate our own tubings in order to accommodate it so the structure was quite a challenge just to get and to get it all to fit together and line up on site in all these different planes was definitely a big challenge Kevin, if you have any questions as we're going along, just feel free to jump in, questions or comments. Um, so, Johnny, can you go into a little bit more detail on, on your challenges and how you overcame them? Okay, well, all these curved sections, like, were all drawn as flat plates and then either bent or cut the top sections here were drawn as flat plates but curved in just a slight curve on the top and then the bottom section of these girders were drawn as flat plates and then when we welded them together we like kind of pulled it to the right position to get the curve in two planes that we needed. So that's how the fabrication was. All these tubings to support glass were site welded were just sent out there into casting plates and the only sections of the trusses that were rolled were these sections over here which was the only rolled section on this job was just this curve of the truss. Most of the rest of the job was all actually pretty much a straight member that was pulled in the workshop. There wasn't too much else to actually be rolled. So we try to avoid rolling where possible and all of these curved members on the tubings and stuff and even these beams at the end, these curved beams were made up out of basically a plate girder where we rolled the flanges and just cut the circular section of beam for that section over there. And then can you tell us a little bit about the actual erection process, um, how that went, uh, some of the challenges you faced there and, and how you went about it? Yeah, give me one sec. Let's stop sharing that and we'll share another screen. There we go, let's share this. So as you can see here, we've got some photos of how the job started, where we went on to that. In all jobs would start in stages, but with May, so once we got this wing up, we'd all go there. And from that wing, we'd move on to some of the bigger sections like that. So picking that up in three pieces, we'd have propping columns to prop it and holding it up in place until we got all three pieces of this girder here in place to erect the job. Then eventually we'd get all three pieces in. And that was probably the biggest challenge of getting this up, is getting these cantilever wings up and in the right position. Yeah, what would you say is the most impressive thing about the project from a technical perspective? Technical perspective is the fact that it's curved in two planes. Um, Johnny, if I might add, I'm Stephen. I don't know if we haven't all met. I'm managing director. Johnny handled the job. Um, I think the only product they could use, the, the engineer discussed with us, was steel to get that roll in the two planes. And the bases, I mean, the bases had to be so accurate in order to get the setting out for this whole curve uh, to work out. And the builder really, really did a splendid job in terms of that, starting as Johnny showed from the, from the right hand side of the building and moving over. Had we had any, if we were out 20, 30 mils on the whole thing, this facade would have never worked. And we had to, the, the adherence for the, the tubular structure to accommodate the glass was a huge challenge to make sure that all li that all lined up as well. So that, that was a huge challenge on site during the erection process. Yeah. And so I this it was only steel. There's no doubt that it was only steel that could have achieved this. At the beginning well, of the project, there, there was long discussions about the fascia and out of what material to make it. 
um, especially from the QS and the architect side. And um, at the end of the day, there's no other product that would have given you the, the curvature, uh, like Stephen says now, um, which was the desire from the architect side to get um, to get its curves shaped. The other challenge on in terms of the facade was um, none of the facade. There wasn't enough project time to take site measurements on the on the glass facade. So uh, the steel work that needs to fit into there um, was all done to normal uh, plus minus twenty millimeter uh, tolerances throughout. Um, which had to be achieved in terms of erecting it to that um, tolerance without the glass, with the glass fitting inside it. And, and that, um, that didn't work perfectly, but um, just a couple of changes on site and, and the glass fit. Um, I think in terms of erection with, with those, let's call it the long ears, there was, there was a very specific procedure where the bottom part was propped um, to, to place the bottom part, then the top of was, was um, erected. And then we had the, the cable, this, you can actually see this steel cables on some of these drawings. Um, and Hold on. Yeah, we used that steel cable. To, to tweak the deflection um, on the structural steel before we kept um, the glass. Um, it also helped to, to get the differences. Where's that cable, bro? That, that cable. So the cable was stressed, um, but it was kept uh, restressable. And then we did the sheeting, we added the glass, we rechecked the deflections, made sure, sure we're happy with, with where it ended up. Um, we, didn't, we decided not to do a second set of stressing of those cables um, because all the tolerances were in and then we cut it off. It was quite a procedure. Mm -hmm. So what would you say you, you're most proud of um, on this project? What, what do you think went really well? From my side, um, when we checked the shop drawings, um, the shop drawings were right, but I think what's really impressive, what I was impressed with, is um, everything actually fit. For an intricate building like this, to have your, your shop details work out perfectly from start to end is quite an accomplishment. Good, good. Tony, uh, Stephen? So, so um, I, I think we've got a landmark showroom, which is, is situated so close to the airport. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a tribute to the industry that the builders, the engineers, the whole professional team, I'm not going to blow our jump, but uh, we're just short a few million rand on it as usual. But it's really a tribute to the, to the whole team. It's, it's really, guys drive past it and they are impressed. That I can tell you, I've had many calls. I had guys drive past, take a photograph and send it to me. I'm, uh, I've never seen a showroom like this in South Africa. Uh, well done to the professional team that I can say. Good. Uh, Johnny, did you want to add anything there? And then Kevin, um, I'll give you yeah. a chance to, to ask as well. That's basically what my next point was. So yes, exactly that. It's a landmark showroom. And as Bay said, this glass facade that fitted on that curve, all the glass was ordered before we started fabricating the steel. So we had a lot of work to try and get this steel to match up with what the line that the architects gave us. At the shop drawing stage, there was uh, one line that said, okay, everything's ordered to this, make it like that. And that was a big challenge to get that whole facade to fit within that tolerance. And it came out looking fantastic. Good. Uh, Kevin, any questions or comments from your side? Yes. Yes, thanks, Denise. I, I think that uh, when, when building a showroom for, for industrial equipment like this, it's very tempting to just build another box. And, uh, and it's really, really fantastic to see something that looks a little different. But my question is, 
to the team is is what was the the client's brief to you i mean did did uh, did they just say we want a you know a showroom like no other in the country or wh what was the brief specifically that uh, that led to this design um can i jump in here um so this is uh, supposed to be the flagship for caterpillar showrooms uh, going forward uh, worldwide um, so they certainly wanted to have a big splash um, on this first showroom and then they want to um, create a ti document actually for and an a bit of a turn down a caterpillar showroom that they can roll out throughout the rest of the world. Um, so uh, yes, the reason why they went for this is is, is definitely the flagship in the world. Um, the shape um, came from the architects, obviously. I remember they specifically had an idea of making it look like a caterpillar, the worm, not the <laughs> not the. Um, the machines um, and uh, they wanted an open and a closed um, portion to be able to showcase the bigger equipment in an open and outside setting um, and and the the other big one was was to be able to drive the very big machines into the into the um, from the front um, through those those openable doors. So so that was a very specific brief that they didn't want to deviate from. Um, and that was quite a challenge because you don't get uh, uh, flush glazed facade doors of that size. So that's probably also the, one of the biggest openable glass doors in definitely the country, if not somewhere in the world. Um, yeah, so that was the brief. Okay, Herit, can you give us a little bit of a brief description of the cladding that was used on the structure in terms of material and profile? So we utilized the fourth generation in the concealed fixed range in South Africa, which is now called our tip tight for roof sheeting in a 0 0.58 thickness charcoal gray. Uh, that was rolled in continuous lengths on this roof. Uh, the sides, we've done that in fish eagle white and corrugated 0.8 uh, galvanized sheets was used and they had to be painted on site after erection. So that was quite challenging, but that was mainly the profiles that was used. Uh, the corrugated part was used internally uh, and also, as you can see on the sides of the building, uh, where it's painted in uh, the charcoal gray color. So then um, I'm not sure if you'd be best placed to answer this question or if we, if we do have a, um, a representative from the, the cladding installer um, on, on call. Um, can you give us a little bit of a brief description um, of the, the actual cladding process um, in terms of complexity or difficulty? One will I continue? Would you like to elevate? Okay, let me let me comment on that. Uh, initially, the the architect was very uh, adamant that he wanted the horizontal lines that you get with the with the corrugated iron to simulate the track, as as we've just heard. Uh, we investigated other alternatives, which would have taken off the off, off um, uh, fed down the water a lot easier, because when corrugated is installed horizontally, what do you do with the water at the ends? So it was quite important to have, have the correct uh, drainage uh, installed prior to, to having the, the, the corrugated um, uh, um, on, on, put on or installed. Mm -hmm. So the gutters were done initially first, uh, which made the installation a lot easier. Uh, and it's a double frame. So there was uh, corrugated on the inside and on the outside uh, with insulation in between. And in order to get a, a uh, a horizontal line of 30 meters, the width of the building, uh, we had to take out a machine to site, a corrugated machine to site, and, and roll the 30 meter sheets. And to handle a 30 meter corrugated sheet is also quite tricky. Uh, 
to ensure that it doesn't get bent or damaged in the in the installation process. Uh, the curvature that we see there, the the radii changes the whole time. So you have a tight radii, something like one to two meters, and then stretches out to 45 meters, and then uh, it turns again at a very tight radii. So to get your side laps of the corrugated correct so that you don't see the side laps, it's also quite tricky. So all the all the sections were drawn out uh, and care was taken during the roll forming process so that the 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 laps will close uh, on all the side laps as you go as you go around the around the curvature uh, of the of the frame uh, and then the the uh, the fixings were not on the crest they were in the valleys uh, to hide them and the reason why it was painted afterwards was to uh, to minimize uh, a, a damage or scratches on the paint to, to 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 or to eliminate that, and basically do all the installation, and then afterwards you come and paint the whole the whole project. Uh, I think that gives a just gives a brief of uh, complexity. Yeah. Good, good. And and what would you say? How would you say that this project specifically illustrates um, the benefit of of metal cladding as as a material? Well, I think it was impossible to do do it with any other product. Uh, uh, thinking about all the the thinking of the curvature and how the radii changes, uh, you need a material that is flexible so that you can bend it around that that particular um, uh, curvature, uh, which wouldn't have been. I don't. Know, maybe it is possible with other other materials, but I think uh, 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 sheeting cladding actually lends itself to that. And particularly the corrugated iron profile uh, being a, a, a symmetric profile, uh, you can bend it either way. In this, in this instance, we only bend it in one way, but you wouldn't have been able to do it with, with an IBR sheet or a concealed fix sheet or anything because, uh, because of the shape of the, of the profile. And I think at the end of the day, the, the end product is, is really excellent. Uh, it's, 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 uh, <laughs> I think, as, as the guy said, it's a landmark, but I think it's really a prestigious building. You, you don't see anything like that uh, mm. in cladding. Good. So that kind of lends into, leads into my last question is, from a cladding point, um, Johanna and Gerrit, what are you most proud of on this project? Well, I think the technicalities were, were, were quite difficult. To, I'm not aware of any leaks. And uh, to do a building like this, with non-conventional installation, if I can call it that, where you have all these, the, 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 the amount of internal gutters that, that, that's on this building is unusual. And to do that successfully, I think, is, is quite an achievement. Uh, yeah, and, and you can only achieve that, that when you have uh, good cooperation between, between all, 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 all um, um, role players in, in a project like this. And, and we, had, we had early interaction with the architects, which I think made the project at the end of the day easier to, to install because we could talk about the potential difficulties that we see with either kind of installation prior to, to deciding on the final product, uh, which definitely helped us and I think it helped the architect as well. Okay, great. Uh, Kevin, any, any questions or comments from your side? Yes, just, just one last comment to Johnny and Stephen. Um, uh, this is a, a really, really amazing use of steel to produce a, a, a building that will um, keep people looking at it for a long time. It's a very, very difficult thing to execute when, when an architect starts drawing uh, in, in other than straight lines. Uh, in, in, in curvy, wavy lines, and it becomes a very, very difficult uh, task for a fabricator to, to A, price effectively, and B, deliver, and C, erect. Um, so I think it's really a job well done to the, to the structural steel team on this, on this project. Thank you, Kevin. Um, any, any other closing comments, gents? Anything you want to highlight? Um, maybe, uh, Stephen, if you want to go first and then just hand off to, to Johnny and then to Johan and Gerrit. Okay, so Kevin, thank you very much for those, those compliments and comments. And 
I think it's, this fits scene very well with the Steel Award winner. You know those projects where they look great, but you haven't made any money? It was a competitive <laughs> tender. <laughs> we, we always sit down at the table and we say, well done, Tess, and well done this one, and well done that one. But you obviously made no money on the project. At, at, at so, least you, you have an award to, uh, to, yeah, to off, offset the losses. It's an expensive document, so <laughs> share something with us, maybe. Um, no, it was, it was actually a competitive tender. I think it was Matla. I remember going to the office. I think some of us were there. We were all there, Bayers. And I was looking at them. So they, they're talking to us seriously. You better get this right. And I think technology assisted as well. And it was Johnny had a lot to do with it. Getting those, those plates cut in full lengths. We didn't have the, the, the large enough CNC plasma machines. And that helped us really with getting those curves right in that. So, Technology, certainly the advancements over the past few years have been amazing. If we didn't have the CNC machines, it would have been a far bigger challenge, that's for sure. Thanks very much, guys. Good. Uh, Johnny, you want to add anything there? Uh, not too much to add. The other thing was Stephen said, the 3D modeling, the fact that we could draw this out and get every part modeled with the right curves and stuff from day one made a huge difference to the fabrication. Without that, I don't think we would have been able to get nearly get it done one as quickly or nearly as close to almost perfect on site as it was when we did it without that. So it was a difficult project, but paid off for, with the award, hopefully. Good. Gerrit, um, would you like to add anything in closing? Yeah, just in closing, thank you, Denise. Um, we are very, very proud to be part of such a prestigious project, a landmark standing out phenomenon. Uh, really, a project that uh, we definitely want to always be associated with. Uh, just in comments, just in comments to what you answered earlier, you know, the installation process on this project, as far as CADI is concerned, was very, very difficult. Uh, not only that we had to have the machine on site, that we had to commission to do site rolling for corrugated in excess of 50 meters that is unknown of and not, cannot normally be done. But also we had to turn the sheet around to make sure that this beautiful design of the architect would not leak. So in essence, we all know a corrugated which has an upstand and a downstand side. We actually had the one downstand side that had to bend it down slightly more. And all our fixings happened in that rounded part of the corrugated, where normally you will follow, follow the trade of fixing a corrugated sheet on the crest and not inside the crest. But that all led to such significance that the building was watertight and especially then the sheeting running horizontal. So bending that one lip down of the actual sheeting and the water then that's falling on the building prevented us from having any leaks. So for us, this is really a landmark first that's been done and we will definitely do it again.